What's up everybody? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today's video is going to be recap basically the last week or week 191 of my 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 journey to rewind my health from a morbidly obese weight to a healthy weight with a healthy lifestyle. So I do want to say I'm not a medical doctor, not a healthcare professional. This is just my story in my experience and I'm sharing that with you. Um, so if you like to see hear stuff like that, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you don't miss any videos. And with your support, you can help me get to my goal weight once and for all. So anyways, let's jump into today's video. Okay, so first things first. I always like those days that I know I slayed it because like I start journaling and start planning for today's video like on Sunday um, just because there's like so much that there's so much to unpack about what I discovered um, about my weight loss journey that I, I'm just so excited to share it. So for those of you that haven't been with me the whole time. I started my journey on February 11th, 2019, weighing in at 309 pounds. I originally started a real, well, for lack of better words, balls to the wall approach. I went strict keto and I was like strict keto, fasting, you know, all of that shot down to uh, 180 pounds. So I'd lost over 130 pounds ish. Um, and then kind of hit a wall or a roadblock because there was, it, I mean, losing that kind of weight, being in that experience, like I didn't have a game plan for going forward. You know, what I thought was important and all that stuff, all of the stuff I didn't address reared its ugly head and then it started creeping back onto the scale. So around August of this year, I finally decided we're gonna do this again, but we're gonna do this with a much slower pace that's more sustainable, that doesn't feel like a diet, that's eating the foods that I wanna eat, and with basically some real goals in mind that are manageable, you know, like I can do, you know, and I can build, like it's basically to build that momentum slowly so that each week I can push myself a little bit farther. But what I did wrong with the first attempt, you know, losing 130 pounds, where I went wrong was the pace was unsustainable. I didn't deal with the mental and emotional side of things. And I, because I didn't work on the mental and emotional part of the journey, I just lost the weight, new habits began, you know, and I don't want that this time. I don't, you know, like I, that thing, those, some things that I started were not original problems, you know, so now I have more problems, that kind of thing. So I thought when I do this, this time around, it's going to make sense and I'm going to do it in a, a smarter, more efficient way, you know, because I basically had the blueprint before of what really worked. And I also had the blueprint for what didn't work and you can easily figure out a game plan going forward. So when I, around August, when I hit the um, the comeback or the part two leg of this journey of this weight loss story. I knew that this time around we're going to learn from my mistakes and we're going to capitalize on what worked before and this time around I'm going to do it. You know, like I, I, it's like I'm, I'm in a better place and I can identify things that I didn't know was happening in round one, right? So in August came around, I basically said I want to eat low carb, high protein. That's easy. Those are baby steps. I, it, I like eating that way. Um, I was not, when I started, I did not track any macros. Um, I was just taking this as like one step at a time, much slower pace. And with that, I made sure to figure out a routine to meal prep so that, you know, I have busy nights, a busy schedule, a busy mom, you know, like I could make meals at home at some point in my day that I could enjoy and stay on track instead of trying to figure things out and then when I'm left to my old devices to figure something out, you know, bad decisions get made. So I would basically make my food in around 11 o'clock or so that day for the that evening's meal because I had time at 11. I was not stressed at 11, that kind of thing. Um, and then this way when the chaos happened at the evening hours, 
no big deal. Dinner was already made. It's one less thing to stress about. So that was a clutch change in my routine that I never attempted the first time around. And also adding to that, um, I, I mean, oh my gosh, I have spent so many hours in the gym. I work out five days a week. I do legs or lower body Monday and Wednesday, and I do arms Tuesday, Thursday, with Friday being like a whole body workout. And I do that every day. I'm religious about it. I am pushing myself to new limits, and I'm fueling those workouts by, you know, the food that I'm eating, and it's all coming together. So that's been the past two months of me, <laughs> of my comeback tour, my weight loss sto story part two. So that brings me to last week, I was like, all right, I'm in a really good place like, right now. Let's level up. Let's take this a little bit farther because I honestly feel a lot of people mess up on their weight loss because they try to do too much at once. I have very slowly got the ball moving. I have not, I've had an emphasis on weight loss, but it's more like setting the foundation first making those baby steps to get the momentum going, to feeling good, to building on that. Because I don't think if you threw weightlifting, eating strict keto, you know, trying to meal prep and like, like all this stuff at yourself that first week, it's one, super overwhelming. <laughs> Two, it's, it's too much, too fast, and it's just, it's not gonna be sustainable and you're gonna burn out. So, and then when you're not seeing that progress, and, it's, and you're not setting that foundation right, it's gonna be harder to stick with what you're trying to do. So my thought this time around, slow your roll, Jess, slow and steady, and yes, weight loss is my emphasis this time around, but I'm doing it with a more manageable goal. My goal is one pound a week, and that's the pace I've been at, right? So last week, I decided to go keto. I have not been keto or in ketosis since January probably of this year, so it had been months, seven-ish months, eight months, somewhere in those, that ballpark since I'd last been keto, I mean, in ketosis. Um, and I, I knew that it wasn't a big step from high protein, low carb to high protein keto, but I knew there was some adjustments there in the diet that could, you know, make me feel emotionally unwell. So I thought we're gonna take this slow, just like I'm doing everything else, and um, we're gonna dive right into this. So first off, since I have not been in ketosis, let's start with the keto mojo and tech check the blood glucose and ketones. It took me about 20 hours to fall back into ketosis, the metabolic state. And um, that was basically just, I hadn't had anything from the evening before to like lunch the next day and I was already back in ketosis. It was around 20 hours though. Um, and it was, it was kind of like inspiring to restart that process again and to see how food affects things and I wanted to level out. I hadn't taken my blood glucose in forever too, so to see that it was still good despite gaining a lot of weight back was also a props to me for fighting for it and not giving up. Then I also, it was important to keep up with electrolytes. Speaking of electrolytes, let's thank the sponsor of today's video, Element Electrolytes. These are my go-to electrolytes, especially now that I've switched to a, or I've, con I've committed to a ketogenic lifestyle. These help keep my energy levels high, I feel good, and they help replenish all of the salts and stuff that I'm, you naturally would lose in a workout. So each package of electrolytes contains a science-backed ratio of electrolytes containing 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium. All without the gluten, the fillers, the artificial flavors, and best of all, they're sugar-free and they taste great. So they are my go-to. I'll put one package in my water bottle of like 32 ounces and I'll stick on that throughout my workout and all is well. My favorite flavor is watermelon, but I also like the citrus. Uh, Kyle <laughs> happens to really like the orange, but don't take my word for it. You can get a free sample pack of eight unique flavors with the purchase of any order at element.com with my special link down below. This promo is only available with my special link, and you, but you can use it as many times as you want. 
So go to www.drinkelement.com forward slash keto rewind. That is drinklmnt.com forward slash keto rewind. Thank you Element for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the show. So the electrolytes were good and then the last final chapter was I felt physically good when it comes to being in ketosis. I have always enjoyed how I physically have felt living a keto lifestyle. So it was not a, it was something that continued to make me feel good, you know, on this comeback journey. But the difference this time was when I decided to go keto, I knew or I knew the mindset part or the mental challenge of this was going to be not making myself feel restricted. So I, I told myself, you know, keto is just another tool in my toolbox to re-achieve my goals. You know, it's there for me, it works, and I feel good, and I know that the I'm in a better place emotionally and mentally to take on the new part, the elephant in the room of that feeling of restriction. So basically what it came down to is I, you know, knowing how good I felt, I did not want to mess that up. Like, and I also knew that to not mess up the way you feel, you have to find other ways to fill the void when you're emotionally unwell like you're stressed, you're mad, you're angry, you're upset, you're whatever, you know, in a negative emotion, or your happy emotions where, hey, it's like Friday night, let's go celebrate, go out to this XYZ restaurant, and you know, or it's, you know, whatever the case may be, it's a celebration, let's celebrate with XYZ food, you know. All of those things are where I felt so restricted because I couldn't have that anymore. And that was part of how I would always keep messing up. So it'd be somebody's birthday, it'd be, it would be a holiday, it'd be a vacation, and I was unable to control myself when I unleashed myself back into the standard American diet. So it's, and it sucks because I use food to cope with emotions, good and bad. So as someone like that, it's hard to just turn that off to just fix yourself of that, you know, because those celebrations and, that, and ways that food was always there for me in the past can't be there like that anymore. It doesn't work that way this way. So this was something that I knew I was going to have to uh, really work on, and I had to be in a good place to take this on. So that's why I cue this week. You know, I didn't take this right from the start when I hit that comeback. It would be too much. You know, I had to start building that progress so that when this part came on, which is a big chapter, I was going to be able to finish and close this chapter. So I was listening to some podcasts and I'm always learning and I'm always, you know, I, I listen to a wide variety of sources from fitness people to diet gurus to, you know, life coaches to, I listen to a lot and I take what I need out of those dialogues and apply it to me because like no person is going to literally get me so you have to look at a lot of different sources so i will link this one podcast i was listening to a couple weeks ago that really was a game changer to help me with this one step and it's their their mind pump something mind pump i don't know but it's like i'm just sitting there and it's one of those ones you just listen to i'm you know, getting stuff done, listening to it. And the main thing is if you've spent so much time in a gym or working out or eating well or meal prepping and you're doing all this work to change your life, why do you want to ruin that with a really, why would you want to throw that all away over like a random restaurant meal? you know, or, or a random cheat meal. Why would, you, would we want to through, do, undo all that progress? And it's all about making yourself a priority again because you don't realize how much you're not a priority until you haven't been one in a long time and you're putting yourself first. Um, but it also is a level of respect. Like my body has been through a lot. It is resilient. It has been morbidly obese. It has been healthy. It's been, you know, it's been everything for me. And it, and it puts up with my shit, well, for lack of better words. But that is literally the best word I could use right now. It has put up with so much. And it has been resilient despite that. 
and I'm disrespecting my body when I don't care, when I don't try, when I don't find other ways to give that respect back. So with all that said, what do I mean by that is my kids went on a sleepover this weekend, so Kyle and I were kid-free. When it's kid-free time, it's like, yeah, you know, let's go do date night and let's do this and this and that. And um, so we usually celebrate by going out to our restaurants, especially those restaurants our kids don't like, and just fill up our bellies. And then sometimes we'll get dessert or go somewhere else for dessert and just like be little dating people again, you know, date your husband kind of thing. And, you know, and then at the end of the night, we'd be like, oh, you know, why'd we do that? I'm full, you know, I'm just, you know, just have that mm, feeling I overdid it. And, you know, and that's the rest of your evening. And then you get the guilt and the regret. And, you know, it's that thing that we always did. But it was like in the moment, it's like, let's go to his restaurant, you know, and do this, 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 and this. Well, this time around, I, it was different. Kyle's been kind of doing this with me too. He has not gained back. He's gained a couple pounds, but you know, he's always there to support me and do this stuff with me. So he's been eating well with me because I'm cooking all the meals. So if I'm making keto, that's what we're eating. You know, I don't build, make a bunch of different meals in my house, you know? So it's like, this is the food. So he's been feeling good in doing this all with me. And then as we're like, well, where should we go out to dinner? And where, where should we go? What do you want to do? And it's like, all we can both think is, overpriced restaurant food, full of crap, sugar, who knows what the heck's in the food, enormous portion sizes, and we're gonna regret it. So as more and more, it's like, yeah, but it's date night, we should do this, and so we're going back and forth with it, and then finally we're like, you know what, let's not, let's cook at home, and then let's go shopping. So the, I made a chicken crust pizza. That's the one where you literally make your crust out of like the canned chicken, and then you throw some sauce and cheese and cook it really quick and then you're done. You know, it was probably 15 minutes to make that. <laughs> and now it's like, okay, well we've had dinner. We feel good, we didn't blow it and let's go shopping. So we went shopping that evening and it was so weird because it's not how we normally celebrate our date night, but it was a fun new way to fill the void of a relationship with my spouse that we're celebrating, you know what I mean? So, and at the end of the day, I'm like feeling so good. It's like, darn, not only do I still feel really good, dinner was like $4, because <laughs> it's canned chicken and, che and cheese and sauce, you know, and, um, and we feel really good. I didn't blow it, and then I had time to like power through a gazillion stores and go shopping, where normally I'd be like, oh, let's go home, I'm stuffed, you know, like none of that. So it was like a huge non-scale victory this week. And I'm just like, yes, you know? So um, then point, I guess while we're on the topic of non-scale victories, let's talk about the second one. Some days I can't get my workout in because of other stuff going on during the day, I don't get the workout in. So the next opportunity I usually do is when I go grab my kids from school and we come home, I will go right out to the garage and get it done at that point. That was like my last ditch effort to get the good workout in before. Cause I am really good. Five days a week, I put that work in and do strength training. So I tell the girls, go inside, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay out here in, in the garage gym and I'm gonna get my workout done. And my kids are like, what, what are you doing? I wanna work out with you. And it's like, okay, you know? So it was leg day, the day that uh, it was like, I think it was like Wednesday or something. And um, my daughter, the oldest daughter is a catcher. So she's got amazing legs because she's popping up and down playing catcher all the time with, in softball. My little, my, my youngest daughter is just, <laughs> that kid is an energizer bunny, you know? I, the things I do to have her metabolism. But both of them were like, let's do it without with mom. So I do a set like 12 reps, 10 reps, eight reps, six reps, four reps. So basically doing 40 reps total. Um, I just do a different amount each time. So I'm starting off my first set of 12. My kids are like up and down. Like, All right, what's next? I'm like, mom's still on set one. And you're like, oh my God. So although it was very distracting, the kids loved doing it with me. And it kind of made me feel really good because it was a moment where I'm proud. Mom's working out. My kids want to do it with me. They see that. They, they won't under, I don't, they just, they don't have a weight problem. So they don't understand like the health sides. They just see it as mom's doing this and this is fun. 
So that's what I wanted out of it, right? So, I mean, mind you, my youngest daughter did like all 40 reps back to back of like forward lunges. And I'm just like, oh my God, after 12, whew, I need a break, I, you know, between sets where my kid just powered through all 40 at once. You know, like hashtag goals. <laughs> I'd love to be that way. So, and then they're like, well, how come you can't do it again? Like, well, mommy needs to rest. Mommy, mommy's old and mommy's out of shape, you know, without saying too much. So it, it's just like, I'll, I'll get there, you know, go do something else and I'll tell you what I'm doing my next set kind of thing. So, but point being, they had fun, although very distracting. It was, it was fun for me. <laughs> um, and they, it's, uh, they're home from school today and they've already asked me, what are we, are we working out today? Like, what's today? And I'm like, oh, it's leg day again. They're like, oh, a leg day again, you know, kind of thing. But we'll do it. We'll join you. So it's just cool to have that. And it makes all of the, all the stuff that I'm doing right now fun. And it makes it that momentum easy to keep building on. So that was basically the the message that I want to share this this week. Um, Cause yes, I switched to keto this week, and yes, I had a huge weight loss. I'm not sharing that part because for one, a lot of it's going to be water weight, and two, I don't want that to be the message you hear after everything I just said. So I'm going to give the official weigh-in for the month. At, on the on the last day of the month, you know, like that last weigh-in. Because I don't want my message to only be, I went keto and I lost a lot of weight. Because I, I, it's not what I'm trying to say here. I have gone keto before and lost a lot of weight and then fell flat on my face. And the story that I want to share this time is you have to set that foundation. You have to take a more slow approach so that you're learning and you're building and there's progress and you have patience and it makes sense so that you can identify when you have moments like my date night where I was like, we can go out and blow it or we can stay at home and find another way to fill the void, you know, of it with, without using food too. You know, we can still find joy and fun things to do and it doesn't have to be food. And if, it, and if it involves food, there's a way to make that food work for us to keep us on track. And that's the message that I really want to share and convey and try my best to put into words because it's a game changer. Respect your body for everything that it does. Your body is resilient. Your body is strong and your body will do the work. So you have to put the rework in to fuel it. And that is like game changing advice. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, use my discount below and order yourself some Element Electrolytes. And I will see you at the next video, probably Friday. See you later. I am Jess. You're watching Keto Rewind. Bye-bye.